Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating a tower defense game in Unity. In the last video I asked you what you wanted to see next and a lot of you guys said that you wanted to see enemy health bars. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So as you can see I'm here in Unity and I want to begin by just creating a canvas where we can create our UI. So let's go over to the hierarchy, hit right click and then UI canvas. And we can go over and make sure that this is changed to a wall space canvas so we can have it follow our enemies around by going under render mode and then selecting wall space. Then we can reset the rec transform and you can see it's currently huge. So let's scale this down to say 0.03 on all axes. Hit F to focus on it and we can kind of drag it up to see what we're working with. Let's shift into 2D mode now and let's also scale this down a bit. I don't want it to be um, as uh, small as the health bar itself because I want to leave some room in there in case you want to display other statistics about the enemy such as the enemy type or speed, stuff like that. Let's also right click under this canvas now and go UI and let's go and create a new image. And this is going to act as the background for our health bar. So let's um, maybe size this down or we could just go over here and right click or hold down alt and click left click right here which is of course going to scale it horizontally when we change the size of our canvas but not on the vertical. Cool and then we can change the height to something like 10 and of course make sure to snap it to the bottom. Let's change the uh, color here and again this is the background so we just want kind of a uh, see-through black very neutral thing. And let's also change the um, name here to something like health BG. Let's now duplicate this object by hitting Control D or Command D if you're on the Mac and make this a child object of the background. Let's now rename this one to our health. Actually, let's do health bar. And let's change the color to something uh, light green with a full opacity. Something like that. But you should, of course, go ahead and play around with this. So next up is of course actually resizing this health bar um, and also we have to kind of put our UI under the enemy. Uh, so uh, let's begin by uh, positioning this on top of our enemy. So let's find our enemy prefab under prefabs here. Drag him into the scene. You can see he's right here. Let's now take our canvas and drag that under the enemy. And let's reset the uh, X, Y, and Z. And we have to do that ma manually. So let's do zero, zero, zero. Let's drag it up a tiny bit and move it back. I think we're going to give it a Y position of one. Something like that. And I might actually want to scale the canvas down a bit more. I think there's plenty of space still for us to display other information. But you can always change that. And then change the uh, Y position again to one. That looks pretty good. Next up, we could maybe take this and rotate it so that it will fit uh, or point towards our camera. And I think we should rotate it about 40 degrees. That looks much better. We can move it back a bit. And I think that's all the tweaking that I'm gonna do right now. I'm sure I'll come back to it before the video is over though. So yeah, this should now follow around our enemy. And the reason why this works right away is because we're currently not rotating enemies. If we were doing that, we would probably have to figure out some way of having this canvas track the position of our enemy, but not the rotation. But I think that's for a future video because currently we aren't doing that. So let's just not work around it until it becomes a problem. If it ain't broken, you know. So um, let's now apply this to our enemy. And we should already see this working in the game. So if we hit play here, we should see that our enemy is now spawned with this health bar and that it follows them around. So next up is of course making it change when it takes damage. You can see currently it's totally static. So what we do here is again we bring up our enemy. We find our canvas, our health background and our health bar and this is what we need to change. Unity has a very very handy thing for um, kind of clipping uh, away parts of a sprite. And it's done by going over here and selecting a source image. And you have to select the source image for this to work. But we don't want any of the default source images because they scale really weirdly and things aren't looking good. So what we want to do instead is just go ahead and find a totally square source image. And preferably um, we would have it be white so that we can just control the color inside of Unity. Remember when you have a white sprite, you can totally control the color by tinting it but if you have a black color, you can't control it at all. 
And that's because of the way that colors are multiplied together. When you multiply with one, nothing happens. But with you, when you multiply with zero, you get zero. And so it will always be black. So um, what we can do is just jump into the tower defense assets pack. And I, of course, have a link to that in the description. Go under the sprites and let's find the white square. And this is something I just very quickly made in Photoshop. It's just a two by two white square. You can search for white square on Google and that will come up lots of images. Doesn't even have to be two by two or anything. Um, I just uh, went with this uh, because it's very small and therefore it won't take up any size. So, um, and I've made a sprites folder here and you can do so as well. And let's just drag it under there. And let's go and make sure that we change our texture type. So let's uh, change that to Sprite 2D and UI. And let's also not generate MIP maps. Let's change this to point no filter and everything else should be fine. So let's just hit apply. Let's now go into our health bar, drag in our white square. And you should see nothing changes except for the fact that we can now change our image type from symbol to filled. And this is where things become interesting. There's a radial fill which we are not going to be using. You can do that for, you can make that for making, you can use that for making progress bars and stuff like that. And then we have a horizontal one. And you can see how that works. So we now have this fill amount that goes between zero for no fill and one for full fill. And we can control this really easily through a script. You can also change the origin in case you wanted to go the other way around. But I like it this way. Cool, so now all we really need to do is jump into the place where our enemy takes damage. And that's within the enemy script. So let's just double click that to open it up in Visual Studio. And really all we need to do is uh, add a reference to our new image and then just change that parameter. So first off, because we need a reference to a UI element, let's go up here and include unityengine.ui. Let's also maybe group these variables together a bit because we have a lot of stuff that controls um, some parameters on the enemy. We have a death effect that we want to be different for each enemy. And then we have uh, kind of a reference to a UI element that we want to probably be the same for all enemies. It's a very Unity specific thing. So let's just go ahead and make a header here that says something like um, Unity stuff just to let on the uh, user know that this is something that we need to be able to reference, but it's not something that you should go ahead and mess around with when uh, modifying enemies. So let's make this a public image and we're going to call this one our health bar. And we can go down to where we take damage, which is down here. And we can just set health bar uh, dot fill amount equal to, and of course we could just set it equal to our current health. And that would actually somewhat not work <laughs> because the problem here is our health starts at, starts at 100 and it ends up at zero. So what you have is a situation where unless you are at one or zero health, um, that's not going to be within the confines of between zero and one. So the value here for our health bar is a float number between zero and one. And so we need to uh, have a way of figuring out what our maximum health is and what the least amount of health we can have is, which is zero, and then uh, kind of dividing those so that we can get a value, an actual representation between zero and one of our, what our health is. So kind of a percentage, but not in the hundreds, yeah. Um, so what we'll do is have, just the way we have start speed up here, we'll also have a, one thing you might think is then we just go uh, equals health divided by 100. And I can see kind of what you're thinking here and this would actually work right away. Let's just try this um, to, uh, to see that this is working. So let's go onto our enemy and let's drag in our health bar. Let's hit apply on this and uh, our enemy should just be working. We can just leave him in here and we can put down a turret and you can see that totally works. The problem though is when we go in and then change our starting health. So if we go into an enemy now and change the start health to say 200 and do the same thing, it's not gonna be a correct representation until we get to the point where it can be displayed. So until we get within the 100 health. So what we do instead is we go up here and we create the same thing that we've done with our speed, which is the start health 
and a current health. So let's go and call this one our start health. And we'll have a, and we can just have this be private because we don't need to access it from anywhere. And this is going to be our health. And inside of our start, we'll just set health equal, not health bar, health equal to the start health. And then down here, we can simply go health divided by start health. So if our start health is 100, that's going to be, whoa, my cat stepping on the keyboard there as always. So um, if our start health is 100 and we are at 100, this is going to return 1. If our start health, health is 100 and we are at 50, it's going to return 0.5. And you get the idea. So what we get now is um, a result where, let's see here, where we should always have an accurate representation of our health in the health bar. And now we should be able to run the game one last time and see this working. And it should work with all turrets because they all use the same function for damaging enemies. You can see here it works with our standard turret. You should also be able to see it working with our missile launcher here. So let's see that in action. And indeed it does. And with our laser turret as well. Awesome. So that was pretty much all that I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, let me know if there's something you're burning to see. I have a few ideas for what I want to do next. Thank you for all of the kind words and suggestions. And also, I feel like it's a long time since I've mentioned the fact that I have a Patreon page uh, where you can go and support uh, some monthly, monthly amount if you want to see more videos and more live streams and just support the project in general. It means the world to me. Uh, you guys are really awesome. So you can go to patreon.com slash brackies. There are some rewards there if you decide to uh, donate. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October. And a special thanks to Sultan El Shadif, Faisal Marifai, and James Kelhoun. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash brackies.